30 for three more yards. Gain of seven, second and three. And the, the offensive line is doing a good job of getting up on the second level now. They're getting some movement up front, and they're getting alignment with hands on some of the linebackers, and that's where you're going to start to see some of these seven-yard gains is Michigan's going to slow things down. Thompson makes the tackle uh, to finish off Corum, but he gets seven. It'll be second and three. McCarthy remains the quarterback. He's in the pistol. He's got three receivers split left right. He gives it to Corum. Corum tries right guard. He bleeds a couple of yards out to the 42. He'll bring up a third down and one. Hey, everybody. Uh, here's our preview of the upcoming schedule. It's brought to you by Meyer. The Wolverines will play next week at Nebraska in Lincoln. And that's a night game. It'll start 7.30 Eastern time. So all of you are along the radio network. Be aware we'll be on at night from Lincoln, Nebraska as the Wolverines go on the road for the second time to take on an improving Nebraska Cornhusker squad of Scott Frost. This message was brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsor of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. Third down and one Wolverines. Pistol for McCarthy and we've got a whistle. And Michigan will call time out. So with 6.37 to play, looking at a third one, Jim Harbaugh will call the timeout. Michigan enjoying a 31 to 10 lead. And uh, as they take this time out, let's thank everyone who helped make this broadcast possible. First and foremost, I want to bring up Tony Butler. Tony had his hands full today. <laughs> the ducks and the microphone didn't work. He was running around down here. He got down. He started. I, I was going to throw a flag on him for an illegal cut block on me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and we, at one point we had uh, extra voices, more than normal, in our head. Uh, so he's done a great job. Yeah. And, and I don't need yeah, any more in that. Thanks to Tony for a great job. Of course, John Jansen, Doug Karsh, uh, our spotter, Zach Linfield, Bob Rossett, uh, back home captain, Steve has done a great job. And our social media, Colin McCarty from Michigan Sports TV, Dave Adamoff and Chad Shepard, they did a great job of getting our credentials. Uh, those guys all helped make this broadcast work. We appreciate it. Michigan now looks at that third and one. McCarthy, the quarterback, brings Baldwin in motion, sets him to wing high. Michigan student fans that have uh, uh, come and 
here at the student section here at uh, Camp Randall. Alvin's second touchdown of his Michigan career is brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Thank you, Ford first. McCarthy's second touchdown of his career throwing the ball. They scored his first rushing earlier in this game. Yep, so he's had one on the ground, one through the air, and both of those touchdowns have gone uh, through the air and been to uh, David Baldwin. Don't forget, everybody, also, uh, tune in to Michigan, this time Michigan football tomorrow. 10.30 Sunday morning on Channel 7 in Detroit. This one will be Jim Harbaugh will talk to John Jansen, give him his thoughts on the game. We'll have highlights of this one. John and I will talk about it. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for Inside Michigan Football. Monday night, the radio show Inside Michigan Football with John. Inside the Trenches. Two guys miss, and he runs up over the 35 to 
Hoffman is giving a lot of guys some snaps. Dan Valera out of Massapequa, New York. He is listed as the third string quarterback for the Wolverines. And here is probably the biggest thing that we've learned is that Michigan can go into a hostile environment, play well, but they'll win on the road. It's the old story. Is the road too big to handle? And clearly this team has just answered that question and said, no. We can play on the road against the quality opponent. Now the quarterback is Alan Bowman, the transfer out of Texas Tech. Four quarterbacks being used in this game by Jim Harbaugh. He sends it. Edwards in motion. He's back to throw. Looks. Throws the slam. That's picked off. And, and that's just where your receiver ended up in the Wolverine slip and didn't continue the run. And Bowman throws it right into the defender. Uh, throws it right where it's supposed to be, and your receiver's not there to receive it. But I will say this, there was a lot of pressure coming into this game because the last two times Michigan has faced Wisconsin. Michigan has run for 40 yards or 47 yards. Wisconsin, 359 and 341. They haven't won here in 20 years. This, you know, I don't think you can underestimate what this win will mean for this team. They vanquished some demons today. They give it to Malusi. Ouch. How a Michael Barrett. Oh, oh man, Michael Barrett comes in on Malusi, the running back, and I mean, plants him. Just plants him. Let's go down the sideline. Okay. We circle back to something we talked about in the pregame show. I was intrigued. Jimmy didn't like it. John didn't care. What do you oh, think of the blue pants? The blue pants. They're back to the blue. You know, with a 38 10 lead, let's talk about it. I like them this week. If you get wins in 38 10 with the blue pants, Let's wear him next week. Uh, I do. Still don't care. <laughs> Wolf throwing. He's got his receiver, Eschenbach, open. And Eschenbach, the tight end, makes the catch at the 25-yard line. Good for a first down. And he's brought down by Jaden McBurrows for the Wolverines. I will say this, though. To the credit of the Blue Pants, if it makes the kids feel good, like I used to dress up, you know, when you have a high school game or you get ready for your, you know, a road trip, look good, feel good, play good. If it makes them look good, it makes them feel good, and then as a result, they play good, I'll deal with it. 38 seconds, throwing down the middle, ball has caught, touchdown was passing. Wow. This is under the third string tight end who got open at the goal line, and I mean, he went up. Uh, Climbed the ladder and made a great catch and fell into the end zone to make it a 38-16 Michigan lead with 32 seconds to play. Well, there's going to be a lot of young guys that are going to have some good film to watch here in this uh, the last five minutes of this game. Accepting the extra point, Colin Marsh out of the hold of Connor Schuster. The kick by Larsh is up. The kick is good. And that'll make it 38-17 with 32 seconds to play. What a throw and what a catch by Clay Clinton the sophomore of Wichita, Kansas. He's the third tight end, Jack Ferguson, who is really one of the best tight ends in the country. For Wisconsin was hurt, did not return. Neither did Graham Mertz to give you guys a little update on what happened earlier in the game. And uh, Chase Wolf, the backup quarterback, does his first touchdown pass. And Gundam catches his first touchdown pass for Wisconsin. But as they stay a little too little too late, 38-17. Back to your point about if it makes you feel good, you know, look good, feel good, play good. Jonathan from Ryan Renner would look good. <laughs> I never thought I'd look good. I, I, just, I just wanted to make sure I came out of the game unhurt. <laughs> yeah. Unheard, a little dirty, a little dirty. Get me into the showers, get me home, let's get a win, get a win, slap everybody on the back and move on to the next week. And yeah, that's exactly what they're going to be able to do. You know, and, and I'm sure Jim is going to say the same thing. Jim Harbaugh, uh, when I get a chance to enter a real post game, hey, we're not going to fall in love with our stuff. There's still a lot of things we need to correct, but it's a, it's a good Big Ten win. Returns this kick actually makes the fair catch back there, which is a smart move when you give the ball to Michigan on the first on the 25, first and 10. That ball would be and just close this game out. 32 seconds left. We've got the 38 17 lead. Coming into Camp Randall and doing this to Wisconsin, a team that came in 1 and 2, knowing they were desperate. They had to win the football game, they had to get some respect. 
even more important is that Michigan went in to halftime, made the necessary adjustments, came out, forced a three and out for Wisconsin, got the ball back, and went down and shoved it right down their throats to set a, a tone and a statement, make a statement for the second half. Then yeah, Franklin gets the last run. He gets the line of scrimmage and he's tackled. Uh, but Wisconsin will reserve timeouts. It's over the clock winding down. Five seconds, four seconds. This one will end in Camp Randall with Michigan. Going to a 38-17 victory over the Badgers and remaining unbeaten of the season. Let's get up on the sideline, Doug Marsh. All right, we got Cornelius Johnson had a couple of touchdown catches. First tip is to the first one. It's uh, the flea flicker. I saw you put the Jets on after they, they pitched it back to K. Take us through from your perspective. Yeah, that flea flicker was something we've been working on since even before this week. That's something we had in the bag since even fall camp. And we wanted to make sure we brought that out. And uh, it's got a spark going. So we wanted to make sure that we were sitting there all week in practice. And that's one we have to make sure we hit during the game on Saturday. You also had a big touchdown that kind of started to put the nail in the coffin down in the corner of the north end zone. Had to battle for that one and get a foot and take us through that one from your perspective. Yeah, before the play, I was thinking uh, the ball is definitely uh, going to be in the air. And I wanted to make sure that it's targeted to me. And I thought, I just knew that uh, the ball was going to come to me at some point. So I was just keep, keep, keep on running. Uh, we've been solid. We've been too solid. So something had to give eventually. And finally, Coach Harbaugh emphasized defense set a tone to start the second half. They not only got three out, they got their quarterback out of the game, and you guys took it and capitalized with a touchdown. How big was that to start the second half as fast as you did? Yeah, to start saying that, I mean, especially against a road environment like this, if you look around, like, we wanted to make sure we came in here on their field, and we left our part, especially to start the second half. So it might be a hostile environment, but lifestyle on the road. So we got to um, race. So I'm glad we was able to come out here. And uh, this is, I've seen a lot of red. I've seen a lot of blue. But I'm glad the blue team uh, came out on time. Right, thanks for your time. Hey, do you like the blue pants? Yeah, I like them. I like them. Yeah, it's a we won, so. Right, thanks for your time. Thank you. There you go, guys. Hey, thanks very much. I get that. The truth, if you win, you like them. And uh, Cornelius Johnson. Yeah, Cornelius Johnson. Two touchdown catchers today. Big part of this offense, and of course Baldwin with a big touchdown catch. Also, as the Wolverines uh, come into Madison, Wisconsin at Camp Randall on Barry Alvarez Day, and I mean they do a number on the Badgers. The final, 38 to 17. Lots more coming on the post game. We'll have Jim Harbaugh's comments. We'll have some analysis. Uh, Brian Bush will be back. Give you all the updates on scores from around the country and in the Big Ten. And of course. Uh, my analysis. We we'll talked to Brian when we come back. Right now, let's take a break. We'll be back from Camp Randall after this Michigan 38 17 win. This is Michigan football from the Ninety-seven won the ticket and the backflow of 70. Your home for the NFL.
now seven seasons in. A couple of bigger wins than just this one in early October. But I, I do think it was a noteworthy victory for Harbaugh. Thank you, Michigan. It's fun when they give us bigger games to look forward to later in the season. We don't have to power down the season in early October. How are Michigan fans feeling? We'll check the phones, the ticket text, 248-539-9797. Now, I'm not going to make a big deal of the margin of victory. Some of that is you know, Wisconsin and their star quarterback, and that's star quarterback. But, you know, Wisconsin's quarterback goes down. So that leads to a little bit of a lopsided margin. And with Wisconsin's QB dead, the game got out of hand. But prior to that injury, Michigan had the lead. When I say you out Wisconsin to Wisconsin, you're jumping around. Michigan players jumping up and down. Getting into it, feeling themselves with the lead. They got the tough running yards. Not the Badgers, including on some fourth downs when everybody knew you were running it. Michigan got it against the number one run defense in America. They got pressure on defense, something that Wisconsin's known for. They were sacking Mertz repeatedly in this game. To the point where they knocked him out of the game. And I think the game turned on two series. First two series of the second half. Now, the first half, Michigan was letting stay in it, settling for field goals on the short field, especially that uh, gift they got inside the five, end up kicking a field goal. You squib kick it before the half, Wisconsin scores a TD. But how Michigan responded in the second half is where this game turned. They force a three and out, they blitz, they pressure, they sack Graham Mertz and get him out of the game. They were very successful at that. And then what do they do on the next possession? They score a touchdown on a fourth and goal where they got to get a tough yard. That's what I mean when I say out Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And by the way, that QB who scored the fourth and goal, J.J. McCarthy. Probably want to see more of him, yeah? I can't be alone in having that thought. Kate, today, you know, we we're going to find out more about Michigan's passing game. They were going to be put in positions where they had to throw. I wasn't really impressed with Cade for the most part. A lot of throws short of the sticks, underthrown balls, passes behind receivers, double coverage throws. I, I really wasn't impressed with Cade McNamara. JJ, they'll let him run it a little bit on the edge with some of these QB reads. He's the one who threw the 50-yard touchdown pass at the end. And again, we're getting into it garbage time type of deal. But the arm strength is what jumped out to me. When you've got the ability to go down the sideline, hit your receiver in stride, and score a touchdown of over 50 yards, that's something that Michigan could use more of. And if you got your eyes on winning something of consequence this year, I think you need more J.J. McCarthy as the season goes on. 248-539-9797. Getting some thoughts on the Michigan Wolverines. This is Harbaugh's first win as an underdog. Took him all seven years. But it's a win for Michigan away from home this season. It is their biggest win of this season where they are now 5-0. and up. You start trying to ask how good is the Michigan football team. And it was hard to draw any definitive statements over blowing the doors off at NIU. Beating up on Western when one of their receivers was hurt. care of business against a, a Washington team that was destined to run into nine-man boxes. Those were home games. This is the best team Michigan's played, the toughest team Michigan's played, in an environment where they just don't win, and they won the game. You know, Madison's one of those great college environments. I went to the game in 2019, was covering it up in that press box and you can just see the the effects jump around. You can feel that stadium shake and rattle. When you walk up to the campus, it's it's a beautiful setup the way they have it in Madison. They trip, you feel like you're in a college football a haven when you walk in through the college town and the streets and boom, there it is. You walk up and there's all the the fraternity homes and houses along the way into the stadium. It is a truly special and iconic college football venue. The last time Michigan won there was 2001. Brooks Bollinger was the quarterback for the Wisconsin Badgers. John Navarre for Michigan, right? Now, they don't play every year, but they have played five times prior, and Michigan has gone in there and lost each of them, including that 2019 game where it was ugly, where Michigan
she would couldn't stop the run. That's been the story of the last two years. Wisconsin has run for over 300 yards per game against Michigan. They won at home, and they went to the big house last year and won ugly. Won in a round. And Michigan did a nice job stuffing Wisconsin's run today, getting them to obvious third downs, and then unleashing some pressure. I thought Daxton Hill, after getting lost a little bit in the end zone, it was a great throw by Mertz. But Daxton Hill gets beat right before the half, and he comes out in the second half, and as a designated blitzer, he's making plays. He forces a stop on a third down, while Wisconsin's still hanging in. And it's the great unknown. If Mertz doesn't get hurt, does that game end up being a little closer down the stretch? I happen to think so. But I think Michigan wins based on everything I saw while Mertz was still playing. While Wisconsin still had their quarterback. Get to some of these ticket texts. 248 539 9797. That Michigan defense is a beast, reads one. The offensive line is a beast. That's how you win championships. Ticket Texter says good win after nearly blowing the first half. Need to clean up the offense, get into the end zone. Didn't know it was 20 years since the last victory in Madison. Yeesh. Yeah, I, I don't think you're really uh, all that enthused by the offensive execution. You get the ball inside the five, you settle for a field goal. Wisconsin kicks it out of bounds, you got a short field, you settle for a field goal. There was a lot of that. But that's why I think it was so impactful that that first drive of the second half, they got the tough yard on fourth and goal, got in the end zone, and, and really flipped this game. Wisconsin down 10 without their quarterback. All intents and purposes, the game was over. Now, you want to do that early. You don't want to let teams linger around. Teams with a more explosive offense could put this team in a tough spot. You know, it's interesting. You say Michigan's 5-0, and and that they haven't trailed for a single second this season, and that is a hell of a statement, right? To start 5-0 and and never trail for a second. But you will trail at some point this season. And that's when I get into J.J. McCarthy's ability with the big play you don't have with Cade. That's the thing that we still don't know about Michigan. But this was a step forward, no doubt. It was called a proving ground game. A litmus test. This is a game people had circled at the start of the season as, well, if Michigan wins this game, then we'll allow ourselves to indulge a little bit. To look ahead. To where, hey, late October, early November, those games are going to have some consequence to them. And, and sign up for that. The ticket texter says U of M is overrated. Wisconsin's terrible. Michigan has still not played anybody. They'll get exposed when they play someone with a pulse. That's Tim and Clarkson. We'll see what Wisconsin ends up being this year. Their three losses are to Penn State, who's in the top ten. Notre Dame, we'll see how they do with Cincinnati today, but that's a top ten 4-0 football team at Michigan. Their three losses are against ranked teams. Wisconsin... Listen, this isn't the, the peak Wisconsin 10-11 win team, but they may win eight games in that West and go into Madison and play in a, a good run defense, a great run defense, and winning that football game. I don't think it's nothing for Michigan. 248-539-9797. Get some thoughts on the phones. We go to Kenny in Rochester. Kenny, you're on 97-1. Hey, hey, Jim. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on
took advantage of their mistakes. You didn't beat yourself. You out Wisconsin, Wisconsin. But when you have bigger games this season, that's why I'm saying, hey, maybe more J.J. McCarthy. And it's weird how they're doing it right now, where he's coming in for one play, two plays. He's in on first and second, then he leaves. He's back later in the drive on third and fourth. Everybody knows the QB run threat is is real with him in the game. They won't let Cade carry it on these QB keepers. I have no idea what's going on with the play design. But I do think the upside's there with J.J. McCarthy. And may, maybe the comparison there is like, ah, oh, Henson was the more naturally, physically raw, gifted QB, and Brady was just lucky and found ways to win, and you got both, and it's 97, you know, it's the late 90s all over again. Not 97 with Greasy, but it's the late 90s all over again. 248-539-9797. Get your thoughts on this game. Michigan fans, your team won a road game. You left the state of Michigan, and you beat somebody. You won as an underdog, something that's never happened with under Jim Harbaugh. I would say this is his biggest win. You can take that as a slight if you want. I'm trying to give him a compliment. Because this is something he hasn't done before. What's Harbaugh's biggest win if it's not this game? And your overall thoughts on the game and what, what Michigan season turns into now as they begin 5-0. 248-539-9797. We got phones, ticket text. We'll keep this rolling. It's 97-1.
comments here on the show today. But I don't know that Harbaugh's like transformed the offense into this new look explosive. No, 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 no. No. They struggled to get the third down and convert a lot of those third downs. Fortunate for them, they were the tougher team and they won in the trenches and they beat Wisconsin. But we still haven't seen this team trail this season. We haven't seen this team have to dig out. They're 5-0. They haven't trailed. That's a good thing. We will see ultimately how innovative and creative and, and, and what the quarterbacks look like when they're put in that moment where they have to deliver a big throw. And that's why I think you need to see more J.J. McCarthy because I think he's the guy who gives you more of that. And I think they know that. They're getting him in more and more. Let's go to Mike and Troy. Mike, you're on 97.1. Hey, what's up, Jenny? What's up? I am a...
Oklahoma's lost two straight in that series. Ohio stayed up 14-0 at Rutgers only a few minutes into the football game. And Georgia had no trouble with Arkansas. 37-0. They beat uh, what was a great story in September. Arkansas built its first loss. They're now 4-1. You've got Michigan State. They will host Western Kentucky. That's at 7.30. From the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Jim Costa. For more, stay tuned to 97.1 and odyssey.com. Jim Costa on 97.1, the Ticket. And we'll keep an eye on those scores. You know, these Saturdays, epicenter of college football, locked in, remote in hand, keeping up with everything. We'll do our best. Michigan football game. I want to hear from Wolverine fans. That's a game ordinarily you'd lose. You were an underdog on the road. Everything I've seen through six plus seasons of Jim Harbaugh led me to believe that would be a loss. I picked it. I'm on my record as saying I thought Wisconsin would win. I was wrong. Now, I don't know where you were at as a Michigan fan if you were confident going into this game or if you're even confident coming out of it. Because I see infighting on the ticket text about, was this a big win? How big a win was it? I think it was a B-level win, right? This question of how good is Wisconsin? Well, they are the number one run defense in America. They've got a great front. And Michigan got tough yards, including a big touchdown on the first drive of the second half on a fourth and goal. How good is Wisconsin? Well, Jim, they're, they're one in three, and their only win is against EMU. Yeah, but their three losses are to ranked teams. All of which are undefeated. Penn State, Notre Dame, and now Michigan. So I think it's a B-level win. No, this isn't a thump your chest that was undefeated peak Wisconsin that you went in and beat, but it was still freaking Wisconsin. A house of horrors for you as a Michigan fan where you were not expected to win, where you were going to have to go to a plan B. And it wasn't always pretty. Like, I think you can leave that game going, I don't know if I'm convinced that Michigan's offense is legit. I think you need more J.J. McCarthy. I think when you find yourself in a bit of a shootout, when the other team's quarterback is healthy for four quarters, you're going to want the big playability that we've seen flash from J.J. I thought Kate was underthrowing some balls, throwing into